Hi, James at CG Cars here with a walk around of another one of our sales vehicles. And today we have something very rare and special. It is a smart roadster, but it is the Brabus edition. So for those of you that don't know, the Brabus company are a little bit like Cosworth, Arta Ford. They are the sports division of Mercedes. They do the very top end high performance Mercedes. And what they decided to do was take Smart's Roadster, which is Smart is part of the Mercedes brand, and they decided to do their thing to it and created this incredible little car. Not many of these were made, so they've become very collectible and very rare now, and we're very lucky to have been able to try one out. They upgraded it with these special wheels, with the side skirts, but more importantly, they gave the engine 20% more power turning this into a right little pocket rocket. These sport a little 698cc three-cylinder engine, but Brabus managed to get 101 brake horsepower out of it. That slashed the 0-60 time from 11 seconds to 9.5 and, and gave it a top speed of 190 mile an hour. Yet they still average 53 miles to the gallon and your road tax is £150 a year. And as you'd expect, it is just enormous fun. It's as close as I'd think it is to having a motorbike without having a motorbike. It's little turbo pops and whistles. It handles like an absolute go-kart with these huge sticky tires. And it's just a huge amount of fun. So we'll have a close little look around the car. So if you're looking to come from distance, you know exactly what you'd be buying. We'll look at it inside and out. Sorry if any of the terminology gets repetitive. There's only so many ways you can describe bodywork panels and wheels and so forth. So first off, all colour coded. A lot of the other smarts, all this was in black, but all of this is colour coded on the front. Looking across the front of the paint here, it's all in good condition. There's no major chips or scrapes or scratches. Front edge of the bumper is free of any scrapes. Your headlights are all nice and clear, as are your lower fog lights. There's no hazing or um, condensation build up in them. Your plastic grille across the front here is all good. No damage to that. As with your lip down here, you have got some stone chipping on the lip because it is very low down, but overall in good condition. As you can hopefully see on camera, the paintwork has a good shine to it. I believe the panels on these are plastic, or some of them are plastic at least. Um, the Brabus alloy here, all in very good condition. No curbing to the edge of it. Nice shine to it. Tire here, loads of tread. The uh, previous owner didn't budget tire. They've got Dunlops on here. Dunlop Sport Max. So they've got the proper type of tyres for the car. You've got your exclusive badging here, which I believe uh, relates to the spec inside. We'll look at that in a little while. You've got the mirror cap here. No damage, no scraping to that. A really nice black, no fading to any of it. As there isn't along here on your scuttle panel, that is nice and black as well. Not faded up. All the paintwork on the passenger door here. Again, good. We've got very one little minor little chip there. Again, a door handle, all the plastics up here are in cracking condition. All nice and black, no fading there. Paintwork down along here, good. And along your side skirts, there's a little bit of sort of stone chipping along the edge of the vent here, but again, nothing major. All of the things I'm pointing out to you really aren't that visible at all. If you step back from the car, you'll see it looks fantastic overall. The rear alloy, again, no curbing. There's a tiny little bit of oxidization just here. Again, we're being picky. We've got a Kumo tire on the back here, which is another decent brand. That's got plenty of tread on it as well. Coming around the back of the car, all across the boot lid here is good. There's some minor sign of where the, the uh, spoiler on the back here. The paint is flaked a little bit there, but again, we're being very, very picky there. Well, your badging across the back is good. None of the chrome has gone. You've got your Brabus badge there. All the paint across the back here. There's no scuffs on the corners of the bumper here. That's all in good condition. The grills are good back here. None of those are cracked or damaged. Still got a nice bit of chrome to the Brabus tailpipes there. Come around the driver's side. Again, this rear arch is in good condition. There's no dings or dents. There's a little bit of stone chip rash, but again, being a bit picky there the alloy here small bit of curbing on the very edge there but again good overall what brand of tire we've we got this i think we've got another matching kumo yeah we've got another matching kumo with the other side there 
plenty of tread on. Uh, coming down the driver's door here, again, all the paint looks good. It's nice and reflective as per the other side. All the paintwork up over the top, good. Then you have your Barabbas fuel cap here. Again, plastic vents down the edge here, good. Again, a little bit of sort of stone chipping wear on the very edge there. It's been obviously hit as you drive along. The panel here, really good. Again, no fading on the black plastics here or the wing mirrors. Or the hood rubber's good up here. And going finally into the passenger wing, you'll see again no major scrapes or scratches or dings or dents to note on the wing there. The alloy again, excellent condition, no curbing on this, and a matching Dunlop Sport Max along with the other side there. So overall, bodywork wise, it is really, really good condition. Bear in mind it's a 2005 car. It looks like it's just a few years old. It's in very, very good condition. Right, let's take a look at the inside. So as we look inside the car, again, the inside's like the outside. We've got the leather trim. Everything's in good condition in here. There's no major wear, holes, burn holes, staining, anything like that to note at all. You've got your boost gauge and your temperature gauge up there on the dashboard. You've got your leather trim steering wheel with your uh, Tiptronic paddles there. So on this you can either leave it in full automatic mode, you can use the gear lever to go up and down through the gears or you can use the paddles to go up and down through the gears. So you have different options for driving. The door cards are leather trimmed as well. Those again in good condition, nothing to note at all on them really. If we sit in a second. Now I am six foot three and 18 stone. And I don't find it a problem getting in and out as much as you think that it would be a problem. I don't find it a problem getting in and out of it and I find it perfectly comfortable to drive. So it's more accommodating than you think it might be. You have all these sort of brushed aluminium dials up here. Heated seats on this in the higher spec edition. You've got uh, air con there, electric windows. You've got your buttons for doing the roof. Someone's put an aftermarket JVC in it. I think it's aftermarket. I can't be 100%, but we've got the, uh, have got the control manual for that. And you've got a start button on the top of the gear lever there. If you want to start the engine that way, or you can do it using the key. Then you've got your electric mirror controls down there as well. Everything here, all the carpet's in good condition. It's used a bit of the stuff that's blown in from around outside with the roof up. But overall, all in good condition. Right, let's power up and we'll show you the roof. I didn't know that the Barabbas edition also comes with the aluminium uh, handbrake and we've got the locking wheel nut there as well. So we have two keys. We need to lock and unlock it because it's got an immobiliser. Turn it into the uh, position there, showing in neutral on the dashboard there. 84,057 miles. If we hit the start button on the top of the gear lever here, car starts straight up you can do it on the key as well you can turn the key to start it idles nicely no unevenness in the idle no warning lights on the dashboard right so if we do the roof now so we just hold down this button here and the roof sort of concertinas from the back comes across with no problems at all nice and smooth and then automatically clips into place and then we can actually do the same. Just hold the button down and the roof goes back. You can actually go completely open with these. If we hold down the bar there, you can actually lift out these bars and go completely, uh, take the T, what I think you could probably call them a T-top out completely and then uh, have nothing on there at all. But obviously if you're gonna go out and it might start raining again, you probably wanna leave those in place. They will fit in the uh, front boot. We'll have a look at that in a minute. So I'll put the roof back for the moment. If we look at if we look at the underside of the roof there's no nasty staining or anything where water's got in or the webbing is good it's all in really nice condition so book work wise we've got all the original books here great wad of them you've got everything for the uh, owner's manual for the car to all the service centers to the instructions for the stereo 
everything's in here. We've got the service book in here. Uh, also in here, we've got the brand new MOT that we've had done. So it ends 20th of the 6th, 2024. And that is advisory free. And then we've got the servicing booklet here. We've got services in 2006, 2007. Not sure the date of that one with Mercedes-Benz. We'll assume it's 2008 or 9, 2010, 2011, 2014, 2017. The car hasn't had an awful lot of use in the last few years. It was, it's to be honest, been with me for about a year. I've been enjoying it too much before, uh, before I put it out for sale. And the chat before, same thing. So yeah, the last service was only 77,000 miles. This one's 84, so there's actually quite a small gap between the two services. Uh, so we just had that one done along with the MOT. They're a little chain-driven engine, so you don't need to worry about cam belt changes, just oil and filters to keep them serviced well. And that will have a look at the uh, engine bay. So I haven't said before, these little cars are rear-wheel drive and rear engine. To open the boot, we hold down the key button there. That pops the boot for us, and there's nothing to see you've got this little you might be able to fit a little loaf of bread in or something but the uh, engine is underneath the cover here we just twist this and there we go we can pop up and have a look at the power by barabbas badging there all neat and tidy coolant level at the right level like i say everything's neat and tidy little chain driven engine so it doesn't need much in the way of servicing very low cost to maintain these so be real so being rear-engined on this, your uh, boot is actually at the front of the car. You see you've got your branded Baraba suspension struts there. And you've got this little storage area here. Enough room for a couple of uh, small bags for a weekend or a little bit of shopping. So there we have it. What a fantastic little car. Overall, like I said, it's in outstanding conditions throughout for 2005. Really is. But then it is a bit of a collector's item. So it wants to be kept in good condition because I really only ever see these going in one direction because... They are such a rare little beast. Like I said, huge fun to drive, but really economical. Don't cost a lot to maintain at all, so you can really ha have your cake and eat it with this one. So as I said, we've just MOT'd it and we've freshly serviced it. It will go out with a three month, 3000 mile warranty. So you can really get out there and enjoy it. Please take your time to read our reviews. We're five star rated on both Google and on Facebook. Should you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. And many thanks for watching our video.